The Intel N100 was a really popular processor. It's in all three of these devices and all three of them work really well, nice and snappy, very low power consumption, but also super compatible if you want to put retro games on it or alternative operating systems. Well now we have an N150. So this is from B-Link and this is an N150 mini PC. So this is the successor to the N100 processor. And one thing I really like about it straight away is it's got a figure eight socket on it. So there's no separate power supply, just an ordinary figure eight. We have a couple of ethernet sockets, a couple of HDMIs, three USB-A on the back. You can see there's some cooling here, nothing on the sides. And then on the front, we've got power supply, USB-C, three and a half mil audio jack, and another USB-A socket. And I don't know if the camera picks this up, but it's in navy blue. So all that's in the box is just a figure eight lead. And because this is such a low profile cable, it really opens itself up to putting it in different places. We also have a full size HDMI cable and a very tiny user manual. And the configuration of mine is 16 gig of RAM and 500 gig of storage. It's so nice to be able to get away from these huge plugs and massive power bricks and just have this tiny plug with figure eight cable. This is the same connection as a Mac Mini uses, so I think this is gonna be the trend from now on. By the way, this is from an electric bike. I used it for dramatic effect because it's so huge. Let's have a look inside. So I need to pull out these four little rubber stoppers. Uh, the nice thing about this is that you can just take these out and then you've got access to the screws because the feet are separate. I don't like it when the feet are the screw covers. So this way around, I really like it and it's got a nice firm rubber base on it. So let's prise these out. There we go, I won't be putting those back in. I could put them here for safekeeping. That's the last one, and we've got this handy little thing to pull it up. And there's nothing connected, I like that as well. Oh, big heat sink here on top of the NVMe drives. And then the RAM, there's the power supply. Let's take these off the NVMe, I say NVMe drives, there's only one drive in there. So that's got some thermal pads on there. Not all the way across, just at the top. And we have a spare slot in here. Now this is very interesting for me because uh, I've got an Oculink adapter, which is where you can add uh, an external graphics card. I'm not gonna do it in this video because I'm gonna concentrate on the computer as it is, but in the future, I will see if I can get that working because that's brilliant. But you could also use it for extra storage, so you could have two drives in there. Yep, nice and neat. Okay, don't need to see any more in there for now, so let's pop that back on. Yeah, that is very simple for upgrading. So right, I'm gonna plug it in and start downloading some games. So I don't normally do this with mini PCs, but what I've done is plugged in a very short ethernet cable directly into my router so I get the fastest speeds. Because when you're downloading PC games, they are so big that it takes ages. And I've been using my iPad with TeamViewer, which has been really responsive. And I've also used my MacBook and this is my Mac, and I also used my iPhone as well when I was on my lunch break to launch the TeamViewer app. And uh, actually it works pretty well, even though it's a tiny little screen. But if we go into TeamViewer on here, you can see this is the Windows desktop. So if I tap there, that comes up. Uh, we can see how big some of these games are. So the Epic Game Store, so Fortnite was 63 gig, and GTA was 112 gig. And I've also got the Ubisoft Store, although I don't know if it tells you how big this particular installation is but yeah all of that worked really really well and I got the browser working here as well so if I want to play this YouTube video it plays with sound uh, so it's a good remote desktop app let's just close this down and if we pause that I haven't done a speed test on this speed test yeah we'll just go with this one and see what it comes up with so accept but yeah, it's, it's perfectly usable as a remote desktop machine locally and also when I wasn't at home, it was nice and fast. Yeah, so I should have around about 400 meg. Yeah, that's fine. Right, let's get it plugged into my main monitor so I can do screen capture.
So I just had a notification from the Intel driver service. Uh, it's installing a new Wi-Fi driver, so let's go with that, and Bluetooth as well. So if I drag this out of the way, you can see wireless Bluetooth drivers as well. Obviously this is a brand new processor, only just come out, and I just had a notification. So it's one of the pop-ups down here, and it comes with this Arc Control, which has got all sorts of things about games performance. So you can see it's picked up my games. We've got live performance monitoring here, so on the B-Link website, let's go through some of the key specs. So Intel Twin Lake N150 processor, four cores, four threads, 3.6 gigahertz turbo. You can see the price is really good. So it talks about the cooling system, which I didn't get to see. You probably have to take out the motherboard to have a look at that, but you can see it's got a fan, but it is super quiet. And they talk about a lower fan speed. And because this uses very little watts, so very little power, it generates less heat. So it will be easier to keep cool. I really do like the built-in power supply. I know it's a small thing, but it's really handy, especially for, you know, if you're using it as a remote desktop, you've just got to think of that one cable, very easy to thread through a hole or something like that. And there's some 3D Mark and Cinebench scores here. So 3.6 gigahertz compared to 3.4 gigahertz and one gigahertz graphics as opposed to 750 megahertz and Unison software support. Uh, which the N100 didn't have. So view your photo galleries, extend your PC screen with a tablet, make and receive phone calls from your PC, transfer files from phone or tablet to your PC, send and receive text messages from your PC, manage device notifications from a single source. I didn't know that was a hardware thing. So they're saying it's only 32 decibels. A little more of a breakdown of the cooling system. If you're interested in the overall sizes, so 39 millimeters without the feet, and 126 millimeter square. Another nice little breakdown of the internals. So we've got PCIe 3.0 times one and PCIe 3.0 times four. DDR4 RAM. So it's a 10 gig USB-C on the front. So pretty much USB 3.2 format, not USB 4 or display port. So sometimes you can have a 40 gigabit per second USB-C. Okay, let's try a bit of Fortnite. I've lowered the resolution to 720 to try and get better performance. So you can see 720, 30 FPS. I've pretty much turned everything to low. 50% 3D resolution. So it does look pretty soft, but we'll give it a go. There's some people around me. Oh, helicopter down there though. I don't think I'll bother with the helicopter though. Not just yet. Let's try and get a weapon. Oh, I got one shot in them. Let's probably get a better weapon first. Oh dear, someone's around. Oh, he's got a kill. I can see footsteps all around, but no one's... That's a better weapon. Oh, I see, it's the helicopter. Where's the per... Oh, I see, so there's someone all the way over there. That's a bit far away for me. Oh, but they've got a sniper. Okay, let's try and get them a bit closer. Oh, actually... Where are they? Oh, there they are. Where are they? Oh, I got them as well. Nice. Now what can I pick up? Oh, there's something purple weapon there. Let's have that, and some... Oh, that was the jetpack they were using. Right, I'm going to get out of the way. Right. Because I might have a better weapon than them. Oh, <laughs> maybe they're better than me. But that worked all right, actually. Happy with that. Okay, so let's try a bit of GTA 5. It still looks decent even at 720, it looks way better than Fortnite did. 
So I've been playing this for a little bit and it's actually pretty impressive. So you can see it's coping with it well. There's quite a lot of people around and cars and things like that, but it doesn't seem to be slowing down. I'll run a benchmark in a second. And if I stop here, check out the city look above. It looks amazing. It is very impressive. There was a jump back there somewhere. Is it through here? No. It's there. Well, that's not going to get me very far, is it? I suppose I might be able to get over it. Let's give it a go before I run a benchmark test. Right, let's spin it. In fact, if I go up here, I get a little bit... Of oh, no, it's too bumpy <laughs> to get any speed on. Right. Let's head around the corner and do a little... J oh, no, I can't make that corner. Blimey. Right, OK. Let's, let's run a benchmark. So it's above 30 for quite a bit of this, which is pretty reasonable for this game. So this is the Java edition of Minecraft. And there's so much more that goes on in this. Look, fish and the squids moving around and everything. It's a massive environment with a big draw distance. There's already loads of things to mine in this new world. Let's get a bit higher. Yeah, seems to be coping with that absolutely fine. Cool. It is a big environment. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now this is ambitious because this is a big game and really detailed graphics, but we'll give it a try. You really should have a graphics card to run things like this, but I want to push this N150 because I know how good the N100 was. Okay, so yeah, it is, it's obviously struggling, but I'm still amazed that it can even run it to this degree. Without a graphics card, I think this is impressive. Let's jump. Oh, can I get that bird? I'll have to be quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, it, it is somewhat playable. Again, I'm going ambitious because I knew how good the N100 was. But uh, yeah, it's probably about 15 FPS or something like that, I would say. But better than I expected. And the weird thing about it is, uh, even though it must be working very hard uh, on its limits, I can't hear the fan. So I'm about 40 centimeters away from the computer at the moment. And it's incredibly quiet. This is PlayStation 3 emulation with RC PS3. And unfortunately, the frame rate is is very low, not coping very well at all with at least this game. Let's try another game. GTA San Andreas is a bit easier to run. That's actually coping pretty well with GTA San Andreas. So PS3, it's going to depend on the game. If you've got a game which is easier to run, then you might be all right. But uh, on the harder to run games, it will definitely struggle. PS2, I know, is fine. And that's because uh, it runs fine on the N100, which was a slower CPU and a slower GPU as well. So yeah, quite impressive. So if I switch on and tap delete, it boots into the BIOS on both screens. And it's a good BIOS because you have got a lot of control. So if we go to advanced, all of this is configurable. And sometimes you find, especially on mini PCs, uh, very little of this is adjustable, but you can see it's super configurable. All of these options, I'll just flick through so you can pause it if you're looking to uh, basically change a particular thing. So I plugged in a USB drive with Ventoy on it, which has got lots of operating systems. So I've just switched on, tap F7 for the boot menu. There we go, nice and simple. So my drive is the Oreco one. And I've tried several of these, uh, so I've tried Kubuntu, KDE Neon, and Ubuntu, and all of them start up in a lower resolution. So if we do it with uh, Ubuntu, which is the latest version I've just downloaded, and boot in normal mode, and you can see it's very low resolution. And if you try and change the resolution, so display settings, it's stuck at 800 by 600. So I guess because this processor is so new, we just don't have the drivers for it yet. 
But I have got KDE Neon, which I'd installed on another computer, and this is working fine. And it lets me change the resolution. You can see it's recognized the N150 at 3.6 gigahertz, and it's recognized the 16 gig of RAM. So if we call up the web browser, that seems to be pretty snappy. So, you know, if I go to Amazon, if I go to BBC Sport, it's, uh, it's lovely and snappy. As you'd expect, Linux, you know, it runs Windows really well, so Linux is going to fly on it. And uh, if I go to the Discover Store, which is for uh, installing Linux software, and we can flick through that, and it is nice and responsive. It's not appearing on the UK Amazon website at the moment, but the US one has got it, and there's a coupon at the moment. But uh, yeah, it's, it's already just a really good price. Thanks very much to B-Link for sending me this to test. I look forward to plugging an external graphics card into it in the future. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.